I'm your Roshana XL. Harlow. Harlow. Okay. What kind of shoes you got on? Let's go to Shakam. Uh, I got some Jordan 11s. I'm a hot mess today, but. And you got on very nice shoes. Comfies, you know, my go to's, you know, those good flip flops, the little go to's. Yeah, I got the toes, you know, the pedicure going. That, that, that works, that works. All right, so you guys, we're gonna go right into our, um, we're gonna go right into my mic. Let's see. There we go. There we go. All right, we're gonna go right into our love question. You guys know this is the last week for our love question. April is wedding kickoff season, and we've been asking questions love all month long. This is our last question, and Harlem is gonna talk about our first question because we kind of got a two-part question. So listen, the question, the question this week is, who comes first? If you're married, not married, just in a relationship, and you have a child together, you don't have a child together. Just say you're in a relationship with somebody who has a child. Who comes first, the child or the spouse? Me, personally, like, if my fiancé had a child, her kid is definitely coming first over me. And that's just a given. They're going to get their food first. They come first. To me, that's a given. So, I mean, what do you think, Sean? For me, a kid is not coming before my husband. And that's just... It's not happening. Um, you know, because our foundation was there before we produced this kid. And, you know, even the Bible says, you know, thou shalt leave thy mother and father to, you know what I'm saying, to cleave to their wife, their husband. So, yeah, I know. That's not happening. But my kid will be well taken care of. That's not to say that the kid is neglected. That's something completely different. So that's not that. But, yeah, that's where I stand on that. But the people. What the people say. The people say. I think it's crazy that it's even. Who can I say? Kid or spouse? The people. Spouse? See, see the spouse. I'm telling you, the like, spouse no. comes first. The, the kid, spouse. Listen, let me, let's be clear. The kid comes first because no matter what, that that relationship may end. Like I feel like your kids are gonna love you unconditionally. If I'm in a relationship with another woman, say my fiance, like I spoke about earlier, mm -hmm. and I have a kid, my kid is always gonna come first. That is my DNA. My spouse may leave me at any time. You know what I'm saying? But my kid, that's my responsibility. That my kid is going to eat first. My kid comes first. And if my spouse can't understand that, then I guess I just, I'm just going to be single. <laughs> my sister even said, kids come first. Absolutely. Mm -mm. It's not even, like, well, why would you even think any different? 91% of the people on the poll agreed with you. 9% agreed with me. So that's that. What's this? question since this is, we are wrapping up love season um the second question was if you guys are going out of town you know the the in-laws you're going to visit the in-laws you know and the house is you know a nice house so you stay with the in-laws instead of getting a hotel is it okay to engage in sex or intercourse is it okay to engage in intercourse or no I'm gonna be respect i'm gonna say no just out of respect because i have so much respect for my in-laws and I just don't think I would feel comfortable doing that. You know what I mean? Yeah. Especially if I live with, I live with my spouse. So yeah, it's not that serious. You know, I, I don't think it's, I, don't, I don't think intimacy is a foundation of our our love. So if you live with your spouse, it's a little did different. Did now, did if you're it's a vacation. It's a vacation. Yeah, a vacation. What? That's the Amos delight, y'all. What do y'all Vacation because because your mama and daddy here. Is you crazy? <laughs> what do y'all think? That's y'all. What do y'all think? On the live, y'all put y'all stuff so we can know. Personally, me, I, I actually agree with you on this one. I'm not smashing. We're not. I would be. Yeah, I would be paranoid. Like, what if they hear something? What if they hear? You know, I, I'm okay on that one. That's a no for me. That's a no for me. All right, cool. Well, that is our love season talk. Um, yeah. So. <laughs> We're going to go into our next hot topic, which is eight co-ed championship. We are talking eight co-ed tonight, you guys. And it has been so interesting out there. The tables have been turning all kind of ways. For real? For eight? For eight. eight co -ed? For eight co-ed. Okay. The table has been turning all kind of ways. So it's been all over the place. But for the finals and for, you know, the people, what the people think, um, 
yeah, let's see who made it to the championship. Okay. Because in eight, two, four, six, only the top eight made it. That was it. Okay, so help, help me understand eight co-ed. So eight co-ed is two women on the field at all times. Three. Oh, three women at all times. Mm -hmm. A female can be a quarterback. Mm -hmm. If a female scores, it's how many points? Nine. Nine points if a girl scores. If a boy scores... Six. Six. Oh, man. Yeah. So okay, cool. That's different. Your That's females different. make a big difference, and it really forces you to get them involved. I think the straights had to figure that out, like, and they've gotten there at this point, too. So, okay. um, but first round one, well, round one is EA Strays versus MIS. And MIS is known to be a very strong team. Like I said last week, they have the strongest girls. They yeah. have a team full of, Chad, like, Abby, Rashida, Lindsay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, cat. They, yeah. they they got a team full. So, um, but the EA Strays have extremely strong women too. So that's gonna be a very good game. And then the EA Strays, they use this season to figure out eight co-ed. Very proud of any team that steps out of their comfort zone because they're eight men champion contact. So they had to learn how to stop being physical. Mm -hmm and use their females, and they've done a great job to even make it into the championship. So shouts out to the EA Strays. 65% um, of the people think that MIS will win. 35% of the people think that EA, EA Strays will win. I think that EA Strays will win, and they're going to upset the people in MIS. Mm. Mm. Ba -ba 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 -ba. Shots fired. <laughs> All right. The next one is the Assassins versus the Blue Iguanas. Assassins are a pretty good team. Um, they, they've gradually improved a lot over the season out there. So they've improved a lot. And I think one of the good things about the Assassins is learning to allow the quarterback to run the team. Run like let him run it if you're gonna let him run it. Like oh you can't you can't do both. So um and that that seems to work out better for them. The Blue Iguanas, they are a very strong team at ASSC. They have some great players. I'm I think by next season they're gonna be probably the champions. Like they are a really? strong, diverse team. Okay. But they, you know, this is their first time kind of transitioning out of ASSC into competitive. And in ASSC, they like some dogs. Okay. So they, yeah, so now they're getting to see what other dogs really look like. Yeah. Um, so anyway, 79% of the people think the Assassins will take it to 21% Blue Iguanas. For me, that's a 50-50. And then um, DY Nasty. DY Nasty, which is... Dynasty um, versus the Undertaker. Seventy-three percent of the people think that Dy Nasty is gonna take it. You just gonna walk in front of the camera like that? You gonna try to duck or nothing? <laughs> Good lord! Of oh, course. Cool. <laughs> and Dy Nasty, you remember they came here? That's uh, Eric's team. So that's Eric. That's Herman. They have Ariel, Rich, a whole lot going on with that team. Um, Jelena, so, um, and then they're, they're, they're going up against The Undertaker, so that's going to be a very good matchup. And then lastly, primetime black, because there's two primetimes, and the other primetime team didn't make it. Remember, they had like 50 oh, people yeah, out there, yeah, they yeah, had to yeah. divide. Mm -hmm. um, primetime black, where uh, KT is the quarterback over there. Okay. Um, and then Justice League, and that's James's team. So 58% of the people think that primetime black will take it, 42% think that Justice League will take it. So it's going to be, that's going to be interesting. Awesome. Do you think EA Strays going to take it all? I think, I think EA Strays. So you pay for EA Strays, so. <laughs> Hi. Yeah, <okay. laughs> um, all right, so that's that's that for that. Now we're going to go right into talk your ish, boo. Talk your ish. Talk your ish. Talk your ish, boo. Last weekend was interesting. Ooh, you seen I posted what you said right next to the, uh. What did I say? You was like, uh, yeah, we ain't gonna get no mercy. Pa -pa 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 -pa. I told you. That. <laughs> that <is the> <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I don't talk for no reason. I'm not going to waste no breath. I see, I see, I see, I see. Let's go. All right, what cool. Let's start at the top. We're going to okay. run it right here. We'll share it. Let's share. Let's share. Let's share. So Let's we'll share. do, you go, I go, you go. All I right, go. so we got X Factor and the Warriors. Uh, Warriors uh, won that, 6-2. And it was the game of the week, so. It was game of the week. Congratulations, so, congratulations to, the to the Warriors. Very we much improved. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. They, they did really good all mm -hmm. Sunday. Um, next one is Code Red versus Storm. A well, a well anticipated matchup. Mm -hmm. Code Red zero, Storm twelve. Good job, Storm. So next up, Arsenal uh, versus Code Red. That score was twenty zero. I think everybody anticipated that score. I mean, I want to 
talk to Code Red at this point. I want to talk to them because I know we'll go into the standings next with you. Mm -hmm. But they didn't win one game all season. I want to know, like, mentally, like, are they okay? Like, what? where is their mind mentally? Because yeah. everybody's been putting up some big numbers against them. So, I think they need to. Yeah, they <laughs> I think offensively some things need to change. Uh, but I hopefully mentally that they're still in it. You know, I mean, there is a tough league. You know what I mean? Like, I think Cole Red needs to just regroup, mm -hmm. recruit, and put players in position to to just better their chances of, you know, winning the game, scoring. But honestly, I think those girls, those are a different group of girls. Like I mentioned last week when we beat them for the zip, they was in a parking lot, like, pissed off, cussing each other out, like, <laughs> listen, we need to do this, they need to do that. So no matter how much they lose by, their morale seems to be up. So I don't think mentally they're like, oh, we're going to give up. I think they just need to regroup and figure out, you know, a better offensive scheme so they can come back, you know, a better team next year. So. Yeah, and I talked to Coach Grant on Sunday as well. Him and Posh said that they would be willing to come to the show and just kind of talk. And I don't think we're the only ones that just want to hear from you guys and your, your mindset throughout this whole season. So, so we hope to see y'all pretty soon. All right, who's next? Uh, so we got Primetime and X Factor. Uh, Primetime won 13-0. I actually thought Primetime would score a lot more on X Factor. Mm -hmm. um, so shout out to X Factor for obviously. And their defense. You know, their defense. So yeah. but good win for Primetime. Yep, yep. X Factor defense was on it. Um, next one was DOA versus NTB. That's the highest score I've seen DOA put up now. I was shocked by that score. Yeah, <laughs> 34 zip. Woo! Okay, okay DOA. DOA. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they were, they, they were like, all right, y'all can yeah. stop talking about us on that yeah. podcast. Like, we ain't real. got it. Mm -hmm. uh, after that, we got Storm versus Bama. Mm -hmm. And the scores for that was 0 Storm, Bama 19. Now, you would think. I don't know, 19 zero. Okay, mm -hmm. great job, Storm, for holding at only yep. 19. All right. Yep. Got so next. next up, we got the Warriors versus NTB. Uh, man, shout out to the Warriors. I mean, putting 19 points on NTB, 19 zero, goose egg. So good job. That's big. Shout mm -hmm. out to the Warrior girls. Uh oh. Mmm. Talk about <laughs> for a little minute, 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 minute. Let's talk about Bama in prime time. That hey. game shocked. The whole oh flag football gosh. nation. <laughs> and I've seen it live. Yeah. What's the score first, though? Okay, so good? the score was 6-12. Primetime 12, Bama 6. And, you know, I, I guess primetime said roast and toast ain't toasted us because they <laughs> shut down Rashida. And that's a, that was a great strategy Listen, to target her. Man, you know, watching that game live was crazy because... I think the the first time primetime score was off really a, like the, a deflection. The quarterback threw it and it kind of like just tipped off her finger. Uh -huh, Alnisa. Popped up. Yep. She caught it, ran it back she five it yards, back. and the momentum just, you could tell the confidence in primetime was like, listen, we got them down. We got to keep them down. But honestly, if I had to be honest, because I'm, I'm a realist, mm -hmm. I really thought Bama was going to come back and be like, okay. You scored, but so what? We gonna come. and and it didn't happen. Right. Um, shout out to Raven. I mean, she played safety. Listen, she was locked in on Rashida. I'm I'm not I'm not sure what the other girl's name is at corner, but she did a great job. I mean, an amazing job. And she gave up like four inches because I think Rashida's like five ten, five eleven, mm -hmm. and the cornerback was like five four. So I mean. Yeah, so the safety Ravens really stepped up and really just focused on Rashida. I, I honestly feel like you shut Rashida down. You shutting Bama down. If yeah, you got an opportunity to beat them every single time. Yeah. And so, I mean, shout out to Primetime, because I know last week I did not predict that Primetime was going to beat Bama. I don't think that anybody <laughs> predicted. And and, and this is and, and Primetime taught everybody a lesson. Primetime keeps being that, that child that just, like, teaches everybody lessons. Because mm -hmm. they went to A for Nationals, and all of a sudden they done came back being, like, ranked really high. We're yeah. going to look at them rankings in a minute. Yeah. But they're coming back shocking everybody. Mm -hmm. And with them shutting down Rashida, you know they did? It forced Bama to do that running game because you saw them mm -hmm. just start to keep running the ball. Mm -hmm. But Bama didn't have their star in QB. That's one thing I noticed. And that's not an excuse. I'm not trying to take yeah. anything from primetime. You know, I feel like at the end of the day, you know, the defense stepped up. Whether Bama had their star in QB or not, doesn't matter. You know, a loss is a loss. A win is a win. So, um, yeah, shout out to Parm Time. Okay. You know, that that was huge. I mean, listen, okay. you should have seen the crowd. The crowd, you know, yeah, it's ATL versus everybody. So the crowd was going crazy every time Bama scored. They got to stop. So exactly. Well, Rebels versus APOC. 
Zero nineteen eight. Yeah, they, they thought that was going to be a good game. I try to tell y'all. <laughs> you gonna start listening one day. One day. <laughs> but shout out to shout out to Rebels though. They came out. I mean, man, aggressive. They came out confident. And yeah, but in the end, I, like I said last week, we just offensively we just got too much. You know what I mean? Like we just we just got too much for most defenses. So I got you. Arsenal versus Tigers. Zero to eighteen. Mm. Tigers eighteen. Yeah, I I, I I I thought Arsenal would come out better than that. I didn't see Tigers giving Arsenal a goose egg. You did. I mean, I didn't see Tigers giving Arsenal yeah. a goose egg though. I yeah. predicted those scores would be a lot a lot higher. closer. Yeah. 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 So I don't know. We might need to revisit with Coach Craig. Did they come to practice? <laughs> like, did they go? So we have to get with him and ask him that. Um, NCB and Tal- Stallions. NCB zero, Stallions eighteen. Mm-hmm. We predicted that. Yeah, kind of. absolutely. Yeah. Um, Bama and DOA. Bama nineteen, DOA mm. six. That game was interesting too because DOA actually scored first. Mm. So I was like, oh man, like what's about to? <laughs> yeah, but I think Bama just kind of woke up, shook it off, and and, and did what they supposed to do. do so do. yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Rebels versus Stallions seven zero. That game was won in the last few mm. seconds. It, it was, was? It was an interception. Um, you know, they were probably about at the 10-yard line driving it back down the field, but it was like it was an interception. Um, and I and let me get this correct because I said it in private and I, was, I got corrected. Mm. He, because the, he likes to be called a him. Yeah, 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 him. Yep, we got to get those pronouns right. Right, because I got them all wrong mm-hmm. in private. So, mm-hmm. um, <laughs> yeah. But um, but basically, KJ came came out of nowhere, got that interception, ran it all the way back in. That's it. Score. So that was like the fourth quarter. It was like fourth quarter. Jeez. I thought they were gonna go into overtime. They didn't. Mm-hmm. Um, I saw some things that could have been changed there. Like you know, the thing is, the rebels just kept releasing right in the middle. They just kept releasing um right in the middle. I kept releasing yeah. that one. I was like, y'all yeah. ain't gonna fix that. And yeah. I thought they should have put Bud in there to rush. You know, she's a great rusher. She's mm-hmm. tall, so you get her. Oh, so Bud didn't get an opportunity to play much on that. Right one. when I said it, she did get to go in because I said it right to Brooks, and then she got in, and it was it, so it was it was so tight. But it was a good game to watch okay. for sure. Um, Do you feel like that was an upset? Because I, I, I don't feel like it was an upset though. Okay. I don't okay. feel like because like... Rebels have been playing so well yeah, they all have. season. They have. They have. And they, they have. got smart coaches they over there. They do. Um, strategic coaches, I'd say. Mm-hmm. Um. So, all right. And last night, I do feel like this game was an upset. Okay? <laughs> I don't know what y'all talking Listen, about. Listen, what, <laughs> what drug you on? What drug you on? I want to know. And, okay. And the only reason I didn't take Harlem up on this $500 bet that she was like, yo, you want to put $500 on this game? Only reason I didn't do it is because I'm a woman who makes strategic bets. It's never that I'm scared. I'm never scared. I just be thinking about things. But we're talking about APOC versus Tigers. Um... APOC 19, Tiger 0. Yeah, next to the next topic. No, 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 no. No, no, don't try to move on that fast. Because, uh, yeah, like, I get it, though. You're a smart woman. I think the bet was really against, like, or if we was going to goose egg them. I told you that we were. I just think oh, they're a different true. team without Lisa and Ebony. Honestly. Um, it is a different We team. knew that we can get in Twins' head. I feel like, for me, it was definitely a personal game for me. Like, I was hoping I could get a pick against her. Uh, but at the end of the day, like, it was no doubt in my mind that we were going to win that game. You know what's crazy? Shout out to Coach Jimmy. He's funny. Because right before the game started, he's like, Harlem, you starting that quarterback. I'm like, I what? That. I said that on my live. I was like, what? What is I said, Okay. I'm just going to roll with it. And anyway, and we did, the thing about it is I was so, I'm not going to say I was scared. But I was worried because I was like, man, we didn't, we didn't practice. We didn't practice all week. So I was like, Ugh. you know, I know my mindset. Like, I'm in it to win it. But I wasn't sure. You know, when you don't practice all week, you might come out sluggish. You just never know. You were. So not only did we not practice that week, we never practiced me being a quarterback. So I was like, you what sure. is Jimmy? You threw a touchdown to y'all's regular quarterback. I mean, Corey, listen, at the end of the day, like, I trust my instinct. And okay. I trust my speed, my quickness, because... I don't think I'm the fastest person out there, but I'm really quick. And so when he told me that, like, yo, Harlem, you starting at quarterback, I was like, okay, you know, we're going we to make it happen. I trust my teammates. That's what it is. So shout out to my teammates. I do have um, one question for you, Harlem. Yeah. What was going on with the Velvet Durag? It was cute. What? Hey, yeah, that was different. <laughs> I was the Velvet Durag. So listen, <laughs> I 
I was having a terrible hair day that morning. Uh, uh, my hair just would not lay down. So I was like, you know, after six months of not getting, you know, dread. Well, you wouldn't know. But when you don't get your hair twisted when you got dreads for six months, it can get ugly. And so I was like, I'm going to just wear a do-rag. And so I had a couple of velvet do-rags. And, yeah, I just decided to wear the blue velvet do-rag. And people, it was so crazy because the stands was like, it's the do-rag for me. Yeah, I like the do-rag. But, yeah, it was just that. I just had a bare hair there. And I was just like, I'm just going to, you know, try to tame it as much as I can. But, um... Yeah, 19 zero. I said that. Yeah, wow. definitely. They definitely need Lisa right. and Ebony to even have a chance. Like it ain't even shots fired. Like that's just what it is. Amber you know Rose what I mean? was out too, and, and I, Amber was out. Yeah. Amber was out and, too, and Day Day was out. And Day Day was yeah, out. Day -Day so was out. yeah, it's a critical. The critical starting people are out, and um, and I think you know for for you got to know who your receivers <laughs> are. And I think, you know, I think <laughs> when you go deep to Austin or you keep going to okay, Austin, okay, baby, I'll that's, chill. That's a tight one because she's not going to be aggressive to fight for that ball like that. So to keep doing that was like a big, like, OMG. But anyway, mm -hmm. um, yeah. shout out to APOC. Congratulations on that. Brent, ready? Um, yeah. Everybody asked so, like, who drinks, who drinks soda in a wine glass? That's all I want to know. We drinking soda in a wine glass. Like, yeah. This is Shauna's idea. Like, Absolutely. <laughs> they can tell. Coca-Cola in a wine glass. <laughs> Stuff I do at home, y'all. <laughs> and it's okay. a Cuban like. We, we call it, that Dixie champagne. It's a Cuban. Dixie champagne. champagne. <laughs> yeah. We could have just had a regular cup. And the top of the glass. No, this is oh. classic. This is <laughs> These are straight from Z Gallery, man. You see how it ain't just straight around? It's like a I see, old but it's, it, it's, it's Coca-Cola in a wine glass. <laughs> Look at my sister telling my lies. <laughs> Hey, sis, it is. <laughs> it is. <laughs> it's Coca-Cola. You don't see that? That's funny. <laughs> all right, so with all the games done, we are going into the championship for the Women's League. Harlem, tell us what's the standings. All right, so as we approach championship playoff week, May 6th, I'm encouraging everybody, if you're on my live and you live in Atlanta, come out and support. We're at Village Park in Ellenwood. It's great flag football. Um... But as far as the standings, we got APOC, my team, representing. We're 10 and 0. Uh, we predicted that at the beginning of the year. Like, we felt like we were so confident in ourselves that we knew going into it that we were going to be 10 and 0. So, shout out to the team. I mean, for the sacrifice, showing up for practice. Even when we don't get an opportunity to practice because of the rain, we still seem to lock in. Because we know APOC, we're going to get everybody's best. Like, we know that every week we're going to get everybody's best. So, shout out to everybody pay, uh, that plays for APOC um, for that 10 and 0. But we're not celebrating. You know, we still, job's not finished, right? In the words of Kobe Bryant, job not finished. But we're happy to, have, to be 10 and 0. Um, in second place, we got Bama, who's 9 and 1. Uh, third place is prime time with a record, at, a record of 8 and 2. We got the Rebels right behind them, 8 and 2. We got the Tigers, who are 8 and 2 as well. Um, behind them, we got the Arsenal, who are five and five. The Stallions are coming in at four and six. DOA follow suits, four and six. Uh, the Warriors are four and six. X Factor is two and eight. The Storm came in at two and eight. NTB Wolfpack is one and nine, and Cole Red is. Uh, yeah, goose egg and 10, so <laughs> zero and 10. Egg. So, yeah. yeah. So, to my understanding, the top eight teams make the playoffs. So, from APOC to DOA, right? To, for A division. So, there is... Oh, are they going to have a B division? Yeah. Yeah, so in the B division, there yes. is... Yeah, okay. let me tell you who's okay. playing that. So, let's okay. go right into that. Okay. So, it's A division, B division. And okay. And B division... And let's talk about B, let's and then we'll get B. into A. All right, so let's talk about B Division. So B mm -hmm. Division is going to start out, and we're going to go right into the people versus the podcast and who they think will win versus who we think will win. Mm -hmm. um, B Division is going to start out with Code Red versus NTB. We just talked about Code Red 0-10. Oh, NTB's record mm. is what? NTB is 1-9. and nine. So that's going to be an excellent matchup. It is going to be a good game. Who are you going with? You know what? I'm going to go with Cole Red just because they're an Atlanta team. And I, I just want to see them get a win. Me too. And I think they have an opportunity to beat NTB. Me so too. So I'm, I'm going for, obviously, 
ATL. So, Code Red, don't disappoint me. Let's get to practice and try to change some things, adjust. But I think they got an opportunity to beat NTV. 37% of the people said Code Red. 63% of the people said NTV. After that, we have Storm versus X Factor. Um, Head-to-head matchup, 70% of the people think that Storm are going to mm-hmm. win. 30% say X Factor. I'm going with Storm. You going with Storm? Yeah, I, I'm going with Storm. And I don't think that's an S upset. I think Storm should beat X Factor. They should. Yeah. The winners of that are going to play the Warriors. And then after that, the winners of that, I'm sorry, the winners of Code Red and NTV are going to play the Warriors. And shout out to the Warriors. I don't think I put enough respect on y'all's name sometime. I know that I ranked y'all lower in the beginning. I'm glad to see y'all prove me wrong in the final rankings. Um, But the the winners of Code Red versus NTV are going to play the Warriors. The winners of that are going to play the winners of Storm versus X Factor. Okay. I'm thinking it's going to be a rematch of Storm and the Warriors in that championship. Who you got? I think, I'm not sure. I'm going to go with Warriors on that one. And that's what I thought the other yeah. year. And Storm upset last year. No, so I think Warriors. I think Warriors win this year. All right, I think the Warriors have been working. They've been gradual improvement. So after that, we have the Tigers versus the Rebels. Sixty-two um, percent of the people say the Tigers. Thirty-eight percent say the Rebels. That was very 50-50 for a long time. Yeah, I think it depends if they have Lisa. Well, they're not gonna have Lisa. I got the Rebels. I'm she sorry. The Rebels. <laughs> if they don't have Lisa, I got the Rebels. And I'm so torn because. And, and, and that's yeah. not even, listen, I don't think that's an upset. I don't I'm going to keep it a buck. I'm going to keep it 100. I don't think the Rebels beating Tigers is an upset. The wow. Rebels have, they play, they have a great defensive scheme and they play smart football. I think they beat the Tigers. And that's the thing. They have very Sorry, not sorry. Because our coaches for WAP are. Billy and Arnold, and then, you know, I love my Tigers, so yeah. it's very, it's like, So who you, who you got? It can go any, either way. Who do you have? I, 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 I'm gonna, uh, you can put me a spot like that? Wait, like, about that but time. I just want you to be real, like, I, come think, on, I, I get it, your loyalty is with the Tigers, but let's be real, you, you've watched them numerous amount of times this season. I think the I think the Tigers can take the Rebels, oh, but I, I but go. I but I think the Rebels I, I wouldn't be it wouldn't be an upset if the Rebels won because it wouldn't be to me ball. right. So who do you have? I think I think I'm gonna go with the Tigers on this. <laughs> I'm not surprised. I adore okay. the Rebels though, you know that. All right, right. Arsenal versus Prime Time. 18% say Arsenal, 82% say Prime Time. You know this is tough for me because I play basketball with a lot of a, a lot of players that play for the Rebels, and I was actually with them with last night. And it was like, "Yo, Harlem, we upset in prime time." Mm. And and if I could, if I can recall, the last time they seen each other, prime time won six zero. Arsenal, so, yeah. So Arsenal feel like they got an opportunity to beat them. I mean, I think that could go either way. It just depends. I'm gonna take prime time. Uh, because I feel like they have a lot of confidence with beating Bama last week. You know, they kind of smelling themselves, as they should. As they Honestly, should. as they yeah. should. I'm going to go with primetime. Okay. Yeah. And then let's talk DOA versus APOC. 9% people say DOA, 91% say APOC. DOA don't have a chance. Girl. <laughs> Let's like be clear. Okay. No, that's confidence. I'm glad you didn't say cocky. I know. Did you do we that? We talked about this. We talked yeah. about that. I just, I just think that they don't have a chance. They don't have a chance. So, All right. Yeah. Stallions yeah. versus Bama. 16% says Stallions. 84% says Bama. Now, let's be clear. Bama only beat Stallions 6 0 or 8 0. Right. So. Right, I think that's I like think a that's a close game. So that's like fifty fifty. I'm gonna go with the eights. I'm gonna go with the Georgia Stallion. team. Obviously, I'm gonna go with Stallions. I'm so Stallions, Stallions don't too. disappoint me. Make the adjustments. Hopefully, Stallions go back and look at film and make the adjustments and come up. Now that's an upset to me. That yeah, but it's possible though. Possible, yeah. Yeah. I just want to see Renee. Oh, you know, get on the treadmill. Whatever you gotta do yeah. between this Renee. time and, and, and so that you run. can run, run, Renee. Yeah, I'm opening up so much for you. Just practice on the treadmill Boy. so you can start like running. Put that thing on six point oh, run and just hey, you know, Sherry. start running. Yes, Renee, please. You got twenty yards running. Run. All right, cool. So we about to um go into our uh. Closing announcements, and to start that out, we are going to talk about the nominees for um, Coach of the Year, and then we are going to let the people decide because we're going to be posting it. But before we talk about the nominees, we're going to talk about the honorable mention. Okay, so let's talk about it. Who who you got? I mean, I feel like (sighs) this season has been... Shout out to the league, because I will say this. I mean, in my opinion, the Stallions are a better team. Arsenal is a better team. 
Primetime is a better team. Um, so it's hard. I think for the nominees, obviously I'm going to put my coach, Jimmy, as a nominee. He's a great coach, but a lot of people feel like, well, he has a lot of talent. He's got a lot of dogs. He's supposed to do that. But even so, like, I have a basketball background. I'm not a football player. You know what I mean? So he's able to take people who don't necessarily understand the game and put you in a position to be successful. So for me, honorable mention has got to be Coach Jimmy. I mean, who do you feel like is another honorable mention? No, I think Coach Jimmy is – I think – all the honorable mentions that you made mm -hmm. as far as like yeah. the league and all the teams improving. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I absolutely. think when it boiled down to our top, you know, our top, like, okay, mm -hmm. the people that we nominate for the staff really, really, really have to earn it. Uh, uh -huh. And I know we talked about Coach Jim being an honorable mention, yeah. but our two nominees for Coach of the Year mm -hmm. are going to be um, from... Mm -hmm. Prime time. Prime time. Coach Red. Coach Red. Yeah, absolutely. 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 They time. double their wins. They've doubled their wins. And they upset Bama. Because that's Bama. an upset. Let's that's be clear. Upset. Yeah. The team, and, I mean, every uh, just hearing everything about this team, mm -hmm. from them going to the gym, them actually conditioning, yeah. them buying into his program, and seeing the difference. I, I'm, they're just, I mean, my gosh, it's, it's insane what he's mm -hmm. done with this team. Our other coach of the year is going to be from the Rebels, Coach Arnold. Um, they yeah. have been oh, man. an impeccable team as well. Yeah. They play hard. They move that ball. The way he is strategic about his players and the way he puts them into the game is just insane. Yeah. So, Coach of the Year nominees are Coach Arnold from the Rebels and Coach Red from Primetime. You guys Absolutely. make sure you vote. We'll be putting Absolutely. it up Monday. So, starting Monday, voting will be open and the people will um make the final decision absolutely who who would you have though like honestly who would you pick for coach of the year because i know for me i'm going with coach red i think you know at first i wasn't originally sold on you know prime time because sometimes oftentimes you could be six and oh but it go it, it boils down to who have you played mm -hmm. if you're playing Cole red okay you're supposed to be you know what i mean but mm -hmm. the upset against bama i think it solidified his i mean for me I'm going to go with Coach Red because I think that's that's a huge upset whether Bama had a starting quarterback or not. I mean, what do you think? I think just seeing the way Rebels move the ball. It's tough. Like, the it's way tough. they just it's moved tough. that ball this mm -hmm. year. And their defense, I think a very few people have even scored on them this year. They've given up so minimal points. Um, so, for me, it's going to be Coach Arnold. But we can't wait to see what you guys mm. uh, vote, and we'll announce that. Okay. Um, coach of the year so those are the nominees and the honorable mention all right and then also just to wrap this up we are going to go into um y'all know that lynn lewis is this weekend it is and a lot of us are gonna shout be out there. to mashonda she talking about where you at i'm in georgia <laughs> mashonda really i'm here. gonna be flying i'm gonna be driving actually tomorrow to georgia i'm getting up early and i'm gonna make that drive because i'm playing seven seven verse seven yeah and so we play at 2 30 but i'm gonna make sure i'm in by one o'clock i stretch and we ready Yep, and just quickly, we're going to go through these before we log, mm -hmm. before we tune out, you guys. We're going to go through eight women teams, the eight women teams that are going to be there, eight mm -hmm. women contact. All right, so we got Tigers. Mm -hmm. We got Storm, which is interesting because I recall last year we talked about Storm never traveling to tournaments, and that's the reason why they were losing a lot of players because players wanted to travel and play in tournaments. So shout out to the Storm for, you know, entering a tournament. I think it only makes your girls better. What do you win or lose? It's going to make your team better. Um, so shout out to the Storm. So we got, what is that, CWFL International mm -hmm. out of Richmond, Virginia. We got DOA from Atlanta. And we got She Unit coming out of Los Angeles. So That's right. shout out to that. I shout feel like out. this year, A-Women is kind of like, <laughs> kind of weak. I think mm -hmm. in past years, A-Women's had, what, at least seven or to ten teams. So yeah, I think that just contributes to tackle football. There's a lot of tackle football going on this weekend, which is preventing a lot of teams from entering. So, yeah, but shout out to the teams that are going to Lynn Lewis. Yeah. I'm personally going to go for, I'm going to go for the Tigers. I hope the Tigers win and build some type of confidence. Who you got in that? I got the Tigers, of course, ah, because the last time the Tigers won Lynn Lewis, guess who was the quarterback? Wow. Oh, so, okay. um, yeah, let's bring that <laughs> home again. Let's do that again. It just it felt really good because you got to really fight to win. Right, so if you win, 
that this is a big tournament. Um, it is. Five women non-contact teams mm. that are going. Now, five women non-contact is deep. Uh, we're going to just go through these really quick. There's two live crew from Jacksonville. There's mm -hmm. Anarchy from West Palm Beach. There's Code Red from Philadelphia. There's Fruition from Charlotte, North Carolina. There's Immaculate from ATL. Um, Lady High Five from Orlando. Lady Venom from Tampa. Lights Out from Dallas, Texas. Mayhem from... Um, Del Marcus, Florida. Where is Del Marcus, Florida? No uh, idea. We're, we're gonna have to look that. Y'all in the country, so I, I'm from Florida. I ain't never heard of that. Me either. Um, M Valley Smoke uh, from M Valley, New Hampshire. Okay. Okay. She Unit from Los Angeles. SWFL Hustle from Punta Gorda. The Academy from Dallas, Texas. WAP from Atlanta. Okay. WAP from Atlanta, okay. and then we have CWFL International. That's Coach Branton. His Combined team of Carolina United, Black Mambas, oh Elite. Oh, my God. Very interesting. That's crazy. Um, and then Rhino, Rhino Leans from Wilmington, Delaware. So that's the five women non-contact. And then just to go into seven women really quick, you guys, we'll go into seven women. AFFL teams, there's two seven women's. So it is two seven women's. Mm -hmm. uh, so we got two live crew from Jacksonville. We got APOC from Atlanta. Uh, we got Lady Venom from Tampa. We got Light Tower from Dallas. Uh, Mary Mac Valley Smoke uh, from New Hampshire. We got She Unit Blitz from Los Angeles, Cali. And we got the Academy from Dallas, Texas. So we looking forward to it. Like, I know for APOC, personally, we're new to seven women. We're going to give it all we got. We're going to have fun. Uh, we got a lot of speed. We took some players from DOA. We took some players from Carolina United. So we're excited. I'm excited to play seven. This is my first time playing seven style as well as a lot of APOC players. But we feel like we're confident. We got a lot of speed. And so we're looking to win it, honestly. That's what's up. Yeah. Yeah, we did. We got some new pickups, so we ready. <laughs> they ready. And then the last category is just seven women non-AFFL. So this is just hey, straight seven let's women. Go. And that's two live crew from Jacksonville, Anarchy from West Palm, Carnage from mm -hmm. um, Loxachiti, Florida. Again, I'm from Florida. Ain't never heard of this. I'm going to have to look y'all up on a map. Mm. Um, Lady Dynamite from Tampa, Lady High Five Orlando, Lady Venom from Tampa, QC Elite from Charlotte, mm -hmm. um, SWFL Hustle from Punta Gorda, uh, Florida, and then the Academy from Dallas. So you see a lot of teams making the most out of their trip. They are definitely playing multiple styles. Absolutely. It makes sense to do that. Absolutely. Um, all right, cool. So that's Lynn Lewis, y'all. And then uh, other announcements real quick are focus on the future. Make sure you guys sign up for that. That's coming up. Um mm -hmm. May is here, so Focus on the Future is here. And then the Eight Women Draft Tournament, if you haven't signed up for that, make sure you guys go on Five Star to sign up for that. Um, yeah, so that's, that's basically it. Yeah. Any closing words, Harlem? Uh, I just want to shout out my team, APOC, not only for going 10-0 <laughs> this year, but I'm looking forward to Florida. Like, I'm really, listen, this is the thing. I'm really looking forward to this weekend, 7 versus 7. seven. It's really going to be a challenge for us because we don't play that style. So it, the rules are different. Mm -hmm. But I believe in us. I believe in our athletic ability. So who knows? And I'm going to leave it on that. APOC. APOC versus everybody. That's A -pop right, Liz. Yeah. yeah. I'm talking seven versus seven. It's a pop versus everybody. But as far as as a whole, Lynn Lewis in the Atlanta League, May 6th, right? It's Atlanta versus everybody. But I'm excited for this weekend. Like, I get excited. You know what's crazy, Shauna, before we go? I get excited about just not knowing. Seven versus seven, I don't know if we're going to win or not, right? Okay. But I look forward to that. It's not fun waking up knowing that you're going to win. You know what I mean? Shout out to Brent and his whole, you know, combining, I mean, can you imagine combining, I mean, combining Lady Elite, Black Mamas, Carolina United, and I heard he got somebody from, from our team. I mean, that's not fun. You're going to blow everybody out. But to enter a new style, mm -hmm. right, new rules, you're not familiar with it, and just going out with confidence, like, I look forward to that. So shout out to APOC. Yeah, I'm going to shout out my team. Absolutely. Okay, shout out. Mm -hmm. All right, y'all. Well, that's our show tonight. Um, <laughs> Kills the Queens. We'll see you guys next week. And uh, Butter will be back. Um, make sure you guys catch their tackle game. So if you're not going down oh, the Lynn yeah. make sure you catch the Atlanta Phoenix. May they will 1st. be local here. Um, May, May 1st. 1st. South Cobb High School. 6 o'clock. 6 o'clock. Make sure you're there. Um, support, support, support. And y'all have a good night.